Well, here we are back for the final group and the largest group of the nouns that you need to learn. There are 33 of them. Um, again, you find them in chapter one, and they look like, oh, before I do that, I need to show you something about screen sizing. It could be that sometime you're going to find an exercise that seems to be just um, too large, the buttons down below the the page or something's off the side or something. I hope you know that whatever browser you have, you can co uh, you can uh, you can find here in Firefox, for example, under View, um, there will be a function that allows you to to make the screen smaller. Here it's called Zoom Out, and you'll see that there's a keystroke option for it. And um, but and you can find this whatever browser you're using, and you can zoom out and things get smaller, you see. And so you can crunch what's on the page into a smaller space. And sometimes that'll be useful for you. So, so if you ever need to do that, you know how to do it now, or you can learn it in your, in your own browser. OK, here we go. Let's go back to, to learning nouns. Um, hoeros. This is passionate desire, that kind of love. Um, uh, these little guys are like the cupids that you might find in, uh, in uh, it's called cupid in, um, in Latin, um, but eros in Greek. Um, and, and you may intuit that our word erotic comes from, from this word, and in fact that's true. The word for boy is pais, ho pais. Uh, the word pais was sometimes used of a real young boy, but it could also be used of a slave, just as in the discreditable way that that um, boy was used of slaves in our own uh, country's history. Um, pais, this alpha iota diphthong, made it made its way into Latin as a e um, and in American English that a e diphthong often turns into a plain old e so you may recognize if you think about it this way you may recognize this word in words like pediatrics which have nothing a pe a, uh, a pedi pediatric specialist has nothing to do with your feet. He's a child doctor. Um, here is the word for ornis. I've arbitrarily made it a feminine uh, because I don't know, you think of birds as laying eggs, but obviously there are both he ornises and ho ornises. And if you think about it just a minute, I'll bet you'll realize that the scientific name for the study of birds is ornithology. I hope you begin to think, how strange. Why does ornithology have a TH in it? And, and why does pediatrics have a D in it? And why does erotic have a T in it? Well, here's the word for body. A, a live body, not a corpse. Um, soma, soma. You know psychosomatic diseases and uh, uh, somatic symptoms. Um, and here is the word for letter, a written thing. Um, gramma, to gramma. Um, you may think of grammar and grammatical. Here's the word agalma for statue, to agalma. I don't know of any Greek, any English words for, that borrow this. Um, a culix, the cup. A sphinx, you know that word, makes it straight into, into English. A threx, the hair, like a single hair. You will have heard of the Cyclops from the Odyssey. Hocuclops. Notice that it's K's again, because of course Greek has no C's. It's Latin that has the C's and no K's. The word for vulture, hogups, giving you a workout on some of these ps sounds, right? Just as we got a workout on the ks 
X X sounds here. Hokuklops, Hogups, Hehernips, Hehernips, the hand wash, the basin which in which one washes one's hands. An orator, a public speaker, um, in Latin was called an orator, in Greek a rhetor, with that rough breath on the row, the RH, right? And so that rhetoric has RH on it, not just R. Mater, wow, awfully like our word mother. And then the word pure, to pure. Well, we have the word fire, of course. Um, pyre, of course, P-Y-R-E, for burning a corpse, which we took from Greek. But we also have the word fire, and if you have read much old, older English literature, you will have seen it spelt with a, with a Y, um, F-Y-R-E, I believe. Um, and, um, and, if you th and, and it happens to be the case that this is another of those very, very old words such that our word feir is exactly the same ancient European word as pure. Not just European, by the way, as we'll learn at some point. Okay, so to pure. And hey, Amazon, you will have heard of the Amazons, right? Not the river, but the women warriors. Therefore, hey, right? Um, the harbor, holy main. The nose. Hey, Reese, hey, Reese, there's that rough breath on the initial row again. And if you think about it, you think R H I for nose. Well, you know rhinoceros, and you also know little rhino laryngologist, um, the specialists in ear, nose, and throat. And you find yourself thinking, I hope. Well, why, where did that N come from in rhino? Why do we not have it in the Greek word? Well, okay, um, on to the word for old man. You can tell it has to be ho, right? Because it is, after all, a man. <coughs> Excuse me. Ho geron. Ho geron. Um, hmm, that isn't too surprising, too, is it? Because we have the word gerontology, but then... I wonder why this doesn't have a T on it. Gerant, gerant, geront, geront. And then the word for elephant, elephas. That's accented wrong. It should be elephas, not elephas. Or oh, elephas. Um, need to fix that in the book. Um, but again, we find ourselves wondering, or I hope you find yourself wondering, just as we had with, did with geron. Why is it gerontology, and why is it elephant? What happened to the NT here? Now, this is a strange, strange little picture, and, and it's kind of silly in some ways. Um, to prepon. What that means is the thing that is fitting, the suitable thing. And, I, and you may or may not be able to tell what's, what's being illustrated here, but this is a, a slave girl, I think, who is supporting the head of a young man who is barfing, presumably after having eaten or drunk too much alcohol, uh, wild partying, and it's obviously not the fitting thing to barf on somebody else's feet. I was looking for some kind of an illustration to 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 that would do for the fitting thing, and it occurred to me in a kind of a comic, ironic way, this is, oh well, either you like it or you don't. Um, do prepon. The Acropolis, you know that one, He Acropolis, the high city. Uh, he Basis, the base, the statue base, sits right in there. He Opsis, the look, the face, the appearance, the visage, the way somebody looks. Honecus, don't be thinking that's a V, right? It's an N. Hutos honecus, hutos honecus, the corpse, the dead body. 
Echenos ho pelekius, the axe. Tuto to astu, the town, as opposed to the country. The polis is more the organized governmental structure. This is more the place where all the buildings are, as opposed to the countryside. Ho Basileus, the king. You may recognize in this the base of our word basilica, the royal place. Ekene he neus, neus. You will learn before long that there's also a variant of this word, naus. Um, and if you think about it, navs, navs, you know, navigate, same base. Haute he bous, bous. And just as you had a kind of a V here in our words that come from it, um, navigate, so also here you get bovine, bovine, having to do with cows, right? Bous. Ho Socrates. Socrates. He trieres, a certain kind of three-leveled worship. Each of these decks had a very large number of rowers on it. So this is a three-banked, three, three, three-banked ship of rowers. And finally, Toxifos, Toxifos, the sword. Um, it seems strange, many people find that it seems strange to, to begin a word with the sound x, but once you do it a few times, there's really nothing all that odd about it. Toxifos, xifos, you can do it too. Okay, now get to it, learn all these words. Congratulations on your very quick progress.